than your mercy for your loving kindness oh for your grace yes for your love lord Hallelujah, 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 you are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever.
Once more time, praise your voice and say, You are good and your mercy is forever. again to Life Changers Family Church, Federal Capital, Federal Capital, Abuja, Nigeria. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. As a hallelujah, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. The volume is down. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Praise God. Mark Gospel chapter 7 verses 1 to 13. Praise the Lord. Mark Gospel, chapter 7, verses 1 to 13. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Christian, praise God. Is this the best we can get? Amen. Good. No. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Mark Gospel chapter 7 verses 1 to 13. Sunday was our traditional Sunday. And uh, I'm still going to be preaching another sermon on the subject of tradition. Praise the Lord. I'm sharing with us tonight what I call the tradition called tight. The tradition called tight. The tradition called tight. Praise God. We read Mark 7, then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem, and when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with the fire, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault for the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands often, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. Holding the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and of tablets. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders? But eat bread with unwashing hands? He answered and said unto them, Well, as I prophesied of you, hypocrites, as it is written, These people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandment of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things you do. And he said unto them, Full well, ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso causeth father or mother, let him die the death. 
But he say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is command, that is to say, a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free, and yet allow him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I said tonight I will be speaking uh, on the subject of tithe, but I'm sharing with us on what I call the tradition called tithe. Praise the Lord. First to begin with, let me let you know that Jesus had a custom. Jesus had a custom. On Sunday, we, we have defined that tradition does not necessarily mean wearing white gown, holding white goat with white robe, and going to the village shrine. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's not necessarily tradition. Sorry, that is also tradition, but that is not all that tradition is. Tradition could mean drinking a cup of coffee every morning. Praise the Lord. Tradition could mean bathing in the morning and bathing in the night before you sleep. And people know that that is your tradition. Praise the Lord. Jesus also had, praise the Lord. Amen. Why is the volume dropping? Is it the battery? Praise the Lord. It's from Christian. Okay. Pray. The room is from this, you know. Hey, it's from this same one now. <laughs> See, we have discovered is this feedback that is doing that home. You off this one alone, you'll see. Just off this one alone, you'll see it. Praise the Lord. Okay. So, we, we said that what, not this one, his own switch. Praise the Lord. We've said it already that something you are used to doing consistently is a tradition. Praise the Lord. Is a tradition. Hallelujah. Is a tradition. Now, in, in, in Luke 4 16, the Bible says, And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the church on the Sabbath day, and stood up for to read, as his custom was. So you see, it was Jesus' custom to go to church every day. I'm sorry, every Sabbath. It was a custom. Praise the Lord. You get it? It was a custom. So as his custom was, he went to the, to the Sabbath. So, 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 so that is custom. Now, tithe is also a tradition. Praise the Lord. And there's nothing wrong in tithing. I believe in tithe, and I tithe, I tithe to my, to my high priest, Jesus, through my church. Praise the Lord. Now, we said, what you do often is what? It's a tradition. Drink a cup of tea every morning is a tradition. Jesus, the Bible said that as his custom was, or as his tradition was, he went to church on Sabbath day. That was his, his tradition. In other words, somebody said, if you want to get him and you can't get him any other day, don't worry, just wait until Sabbath day. He must come to church. How do you know? He said, that is his custom, that is his tradition. Did you get that now? Praise the Lord. So tithe also can be a tradition. In fact, tithe is a tradition. For a believer, tithe is supposed to be what? A tradition. And of course, if Jesus have a tradition of going to, to church every Sabbath, do you call that a bad tradition? That's a good tradition. Tight also should be a tradition. I said it before. I said, because of those who keep the tradition of tight, we can draw the church budget every month based on those people that will know that tithe has become their tradition. Some people try, tithe is not their tradition. If they wake up on the left side of the bed on Sunday, they will tithe. 
But if they wake up on the right side of the bed, they won't tie it. So you see, that is not their tradition. Praise the Lord. Okay, so, 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 tight is scriptural and there's nothing wrong about tight. So, so, like I said, I believe in tight and I tight, I tight to my high priest through my church. Hebrews 5, 1 to 6. The Bible says, for every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God. For every high priest, that's Hebrews 5, 1 to 6. For every high priest taken from among men. Every high priest taken from amongst men. Praise the Lord. Like now, I'm like a high priest for this house. I'm pick among men. The Levites, why, why? The Levites were what? They were, they were, the Levites were priests. Hallelujah. So they were taken amongst men. So he said, it's ordained for men in things pertaining to God. In other words, priest goes from men to God. Just like prophet go from God to man. This he said, it's ordained for men in things pertaining to God. It's ordained for men in things pertaining to God. In other words, priests go from men to God. Praise the Lord. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of, of the way? For that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And by reason hereof he ought as for the people. So also for himself. To offer for sins and no man taketh his dishonor unto himself. No man take dishonor unto himself. But he that is called of God as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. As he said also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Praise the Lord. So today we, we tied to Jesus as our high priest. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says, High priest goes from men to God. Are there still men on earth? So we need a priest to go from us to God. Praise the Lord. Okay. Now, now not to believe in tithing today is to say that you don't believe in the priesthood ministry of Christ. And if you don't believe in the priesthood ministry of Christ, we will assess the mercy of, mercy of God, the mercy seat of God for you because that is the ministry of the priest according to Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. Praise the Lord. Now, I said that tithe should be a tradition. Tradition is something that you do consistently. So tithe should be something that we do consistently. Just like Jesus went to church and it was said to be his custom. Praise God. But now I said that he, uh, the, the priest goes from man to God. And the Bible says he's ordained, he said, he's ordained for men. Priests are ordained for men. Priests are not ordained for God. They are ordained for men. So priests are supposed to go from men to God. Hallelujah. And, 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 and the Bible says, Jesus Christ, in, in, in that verse 5, he says, so also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest. So Christ is a high priest. Now hear this. If I don't finish this today, I will finish on next Wednesday. Now hear this. The Bible says, and no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron, as was Aaron, as was Aaron, was. Aaron, it was put at the back of Aaron as was. Was. Because their priesthood has finished. So, Aaron is now worse. Now, look at verse 16. That says, so also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest. So, Christ is made an high priest. Are you see there? But he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. Now, verse 16 now says, As is said also in another place, Thou art a priest forever. After the order of Melchizedek. Thou art a priest for how long? Forever. So meaning that the present day, one of the present day ministry of Jesus Christ is what? His priesthood. His priesthood. 
So, and the question is, do we still have men today? So if you have men today, then men, we still need a priest to go from them to God. Am I making sense? So if men, we need a priest to go from them to God, the Bible said that God has ordained Christ to be a priest. So his priesthood will never expire like the Aaron's. So he's a priest forever. He's a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Is a priest forever. Hallelujah. Now, so if you don't believe in tithing, because we're still going to see it, the Bible says it's ordained for men in Hebrews 5 1. It says it's ordained for men in things pertaining to God. In things pertaining to God. That he may do what? Go back to Hebrews 5 1. That he may do what? that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Hallelujah. That he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. Now, men are still here. And priests are ordained for men unto God. And the Bible says the priesthood of Jesus Christ is forever. Meaning that Christ is still a priest today. So if Christ is still a priest today, is a priest unto who? Unto God? Is a priest unto us. So his priesthood ministry is still on. Are you listening to me now? Now, if you don't believe in tithing, hear this. If you don't believe in tithing, then Jesus Christ has no right to still be a priest. Are you listening to me now? That's the meaning. Because priests are ordained unto men, are ordained, for, are ordained for men in things pertaining to God. They are, obtained, they are ordained for men in things pertaining to God. So Christ was ordained for me in things pertaining to God. To offer unto me sacrifices, to offer unto me both gifts and sacrifices, both gifts and sacrifices, both are you listening to me now? Now, the sacrifice is the sacrifice of his body for sin. Sacrifices for sins. Are you listening to me now? Now, he's not talking about gifts for sin. It is sacrifices for sin. Because he has offered sacrifice once and for all. So he's not offering the sacrifices again. Did you get that? Christ has offered the sacrifices once and for when? And for all. It is only the Levites that are offering sacrifices every day. Is somebody listening to me? It's only the Levites that are offering sacrifices every day. Christ has offered sacrifices once and for all. So Christ is not offering sacrifices every day. Are you, still, are you still with me? But listen to this. But he was meant, he was ordained for men unto God pertaining unto men in things pertaining to God. Now, we have now said that he has offered sacrifices once and for how long? For all. So, so meaning that presently as a priest is not offering sacrifices again. For sins again. So the sacrifice he offered for sins covered the sins of the past. He covered the present sin. He covered the future sin. Because it's ordained unto every man who wants to die and after their judgment. And Christ did not die as God. He died as a man. So if he died as a man, he can't die twice. So since he had all opportunity to die once, he died to pay arrears and to pay advanced sins. Now, he's not, he's not left with one. Gifts. <laughs> Gifts. So, if he's no longer offering sacrifices for sin today again, it means that why he's still in the office is for the gifts. 
Huh? It's for the gifts. Now, the gifts come from who? From man. Because he was ordained as a priest for man concerning things pertaining to God. And that gift, from what we know from the Old Testament, is what? It's tight. It's tight. So meaning that, listen to me, Christ is also ordained as a high priest to offer both. Both. Both what? Gifts and sacrifices for sin. But we have already proved now that sacrifices for sin had been once and for all. So he's not going to do that tomorrow. So if he's still in the, in the priesthood office today, because his priesthood office is forever. Abi, so what is he offering today? Huh? The gifts. Now who is producing the gifts? In the form of what? In the form of tithe. Now, Becky, if you don't believe in tithing, then Jesus has no business occupying the high priest's office. Because he's not going to offer sacrifices for sin again. Now, the only thing that is still keeping him in the priesthood office is what? The gifts. And the gifts come from me. So if I don't believe in that gift called tithe, then what is he doing in the office? Huh? So now, if you don't believe in tithing, then it means that you don't believe in the priesthood office of Jesus. Hmm? Now, if you don't believe in the priesthood office of Jesus, are you still there? If you don't believe in the priesthood office of Jesus, then how do you obtain mercy? Pastor Jay, how do you ob obtain mercy? Because you, as a man, you cannot, you cannot approach the mercy seat of God for mercy. You cannot. It must come through your, it's your high priest that does that for you. If you try to enter the holiest of holies, you'll be struck dead. So the high priest entered there and he performs, he, he put the blood on the mercy seat in between the two cherubim and seraphim. Sorry, cherubims. Cherubims, right? Just in between the two cherubims. Did you get this now? So now, look at Hebrews 4, 14. The Bible says, seeing then that we have. It didn't say seeing then that we had. He says, seeing then that we have. Have is what? Past tense? Future tense? Seeing then that we have a high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our what? Confession. Hold fast your confession. By stripe I'm here. Even though he was rich, but for my sake he became poor, so that me through his poverty might be rich. Hold fast your what? Your confession. Hold fast your confession. For we have not an high priest. Did you see that? For we have not an high priest. Not that we have, we had not. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He can feel whatever you are feeling in your situation. He feels it. But what did he say you should do? Hold fast your confession. Oh, I am dying. Oh, I don't think I can hold on anymore. You will die. You can't hold on anymore, you will lose. But your high priest said, please, hold fast your confession. Even when the beard is killing you, let the world know that you say, you know the grace. <laughs> I know the grace. The same thing with sickness. What do you say? By himself, I'm here. He said, hold fast your confession. For we have not. He didn't say, for we have not. For we have not a high priest that is not taught by the feelings of our infirmity. He said, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Now look at verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Did you see that now? So, if you say you don't believe in the priest, if you say, sorry, if you say you don't believe in tithing, then what you are saying is that you don't believe in the priesthood ministry of Jesus. Now, if you don't believe in the priesthood of Jesus, then it means that you are saying that you don't believe in God's mercy. Now, how many of you can survive with God, God's mercy? Eh? How many? Huh? So, why will men choose to say that that tithe, tithe is gone? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, this is one of the present day ministry of Jesus Christ. Let's read Hebrews 8, 1 to 6. Hebrews 8, 1 to 6 said, here is the main point. We have a high priest. I'm reading from New Living Translation. We do what? We have a high priest. Who sat down in the place of honor beside the throne of the majesty God in heaven. There he ministers in the heavenly tabernacle. There he does what? He ministers. Present continues. Tabernacle, the true place of worship that was built by the Lord and not by human hands. And since every high priest is required to offer priests and sacrifices, gifts and sacrifices, our high priest must, our high priest must do what? Must. It's not optional. Must. Our high priest must make an offering too. He must. He must. Praise the Lord. If he were here on earth, he would not even be a priest. Since there are already a priest who offer the gift required by the Lord. They serve in a system of worship that is only a copy. A shadow of the real one in heaven. For when Moses was getting ready to build the tabernacle, God gave him this warning. Be sure that you make everything according to the pattern I have shown you here on the mountain. But now Jesus, our high priest, has been given a ministry that is far superior to the old priesthood. To the old, <laughs> old priesthood. For it's the one who mediates for us as far as better covenant with God. For us, as far better covenant with God, based on better promises. Let me tell you, you are living in the best of times. Did you hear what I said? You are living in the best of times. You are living in the best of times. Now, the people under the law, they tithe to their priest, and, and they have a tabernacle. They have the mercy seat. They did everything, but the Bible says God told Moses to do it according to the pattern that he showed him in heaven. Did you see now? And the Bible said that these guys are referred to now as old priests. Who is the new priest now? Jesus. So why are we skipping tight? <laughs> let me tell you. It's one, of the, it's one of the most dangerous chains you can break in your Christian life. Don't break it. Because listen, that kept Jesus Christ in his present day ministry on your behalf. Hallelujah. If you don't tie to Jesus, then you have refused to be connected to his priesthood ministry. If you have refused to be connected to his priesthood ministry, then you have refused to be connected to his mercy. To the mercy of God. You can see, the Bible said that we have a better, we have a, we have better covenant based on better promises. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Okay. Let me still prove further. Let me still show more things now. Now, uh, a tithe is not law. It existed before the law of Moses. Because Melchizedek who collected Abraham's tithe, lived before the law of Moses. Now, Jesus' priesthood is after the priesthood of Melchizedek and not after the order of the priesthood of Levi, whose priesthood was established by the law of Moses. 
You see, the argument now is that some people think that when they don't want to tithe, the reason why they don't want to tithe is because they don't want to tithe under the law. But listen to this. God, the, God said the priesthood of Jesus Christ is not after the order of Levites. It's after the order of Melchizedek. And Melchizedek existed before the law. Long before the law. So if, so if the priesthood of Christ is not after the order of Levite, but after the order of Melchizedek, now what is God saying? God is saying that Christ's own priesthood is not ordained by the law. But the Levite's priesthood is ordained by the law. Now here I put it in Hebrews 7, 5. It says, and verily they are of the sons of Levi who receive the office of the priesthood. Have a commandment to take tithes of the people. According to the law that is of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. So their own priesthood was ordained by the law. But the Bible categorically told us that the priesthood of Christ was not ordained by the law. How? By a covenant. Now look at Hebrews 7, 13 to 17. For the priest, for the priest we are talking about belongs to a different tribe whose members have never served at the altar as priest. Because if they have, then they will have been under the law. What I mean is, I'm reading from New Living Tradition. Our Lord came from the tribe of Judah, and Moses never mentioned priests coming from that tribe. Jesus is like Melchizedek. This change has been made very clear since a different priest who is like Melchizedek has appeared. Now, Jesus became a priest not by the meeting the physical requirement of belonging to the tribe of Levite, but by the power of a life that cannot be destroyed. And the psalmist pointed this out when he prophesied, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Did you see that? So meaning that God has exonerated Christ away from the law. So God has taken time to tell us that Christ's priesthood was not ordained by the law. So Christ is a different priest from the priest of the Levites. Hallelujah. And remember Christ is my high priest. So if he was ordained, if he was not ordained by the law, are you listening to me now? Now, what is God up to? Now, do you know why God has to bring Jesus from another tribe to become a priest after the order of Melchizedek and not after the order of Levi? Because we would have expected him to come through the lineage of Levi to inherit the priesthood ministry the same way he came through the lineage of David to inherit the throne of David. Did you hear the argument? Christ has to come through the lineage of David to be able to inherit the throne of David, isn't it? Now, if he's going to inherit the priesthood of the Levite, he should have come through the lineage of the Levite. So since he didn't come through the lineage of Levite, they knew that he did not inherit the priesthood of the Levite. So just because, now why did God do that? Just because he wants to change the law to favor you to tithe. That's why God did that. And that's why if you read that verse 7, it says, for uh, that Hebrews 7, 12, it says, for when there is a change of the priesthood, for when there is a change of the priesthood, NIV, NIV says, for when there is a change of the priesthood, there must, there must also be a change of the law. Did you see why God, why God didn't allow Christ to come through the lineage of the Levites? He doesn't want him to inherit the office of the Levites. So God ordained him as a priest under uh, which lineage now? Judah. And concerning Judah, there was no prophecy concerning the office of the priesthood. Hallelujah. So now that God has changed the priest, from the house of the Levites, it automatically means, interpret to me, that the law has also changed. 
Because once you change, if you are not changing the law, then you can't change the priest. But if you have changed the priest, you have to change the law. So if there's no need to change the law, then why are you changing the priest? Because God wants to change the law. God changed the priest. And why did God do that? Because God wants us to stay tight. So that when we tight, we will no longer tight under the law of Moses, but under the priesthood of Christ, which is under a different law. And that's why the Bible now says in Galatians 3.13, here is the change. In Galatians 3.13, in Galatians 3.13, the Bible says that Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Be made a cause for us, for it is written, cause is everyone that hangeth on the tree. This is the only scripture that shows that, that, that shows what part of the law is changed. And the process of the change. Christ does not redeem us from the law, but from the cause of the law. So we still have to bless. We still have, we still have the blessing of the law for the titles that that is the meaning. Did you get it now? The Bible didn't say Christ has redeemed us from the law. Did Christ redeem us from the law? What did he redeem us from? From the cause of the law. So if he redeemed us from the cause of the law, it means that the remaining part of the law is on. And you know the law is, the law is two. The law is in two sections. If you keep all that God said, you are under what? Blessing. If you violate what God said, you're under what? That's all. Those are the two. <laughs> Those are the two. So you keep the law, you're under the blessing. You go into, you, you don't keep the law, you are under the cause. And the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Okay. Now, how did he redeem us from the cause of the law? By changing the law in our favor. You know, it's like they discovered that, okay, there was a time that there was, uh, there was a death penalty. But that law was changed in favor of thieves. Because before, if you steal and you are caught to have stolen, then they will kill you. But when the law was changed, the government changed, so it changed the law. It was changed in favor of thieves. Did you get what I'm saying now? So now when God changed the priesthood, he also changed the law. <laughs> and the law favors us. And the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. But they say, it didn't, redeem, it didn't redeem us from the law. So if we were redeemed from the cause of the law, then what were we not redeemed from? From the blessing. So meaning that the cause is off, the blessings is on. How do you get into the cause? Huh? By not, look, look at what it is. Let me show it to you. Galatians 3.10, everybody. Galatians 3.10. Galatians 3.10. Are you there? Are you in Galatians 3.10? I want to show you how you get into the cause under the law. Can I read? For as many as are of the works of the law are, are under the cause. Excuse me. Are under the cause. How? For it is written, cost is everyone that continueth not in all the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So how do you come under the cause when you are under the law? Eh? No. It's written here now. Can I do it again? Look at Galatians 3.10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the cause. How? How? Let's read it together, all of us. How? Uh-huh. That do what? In all things which are written in the book of the law. So how do you come under the cause? Eh? When you what? No. It's written there, simple English. Continue it not. 
Did you see how, how you come under the curse? By not continuing in all that is written in the law, you bring yourself under curse. You bring yourself under curse. Did you get it now? If you don't continue in all the things that are written in the law, what happens to you? You bring yourself under the curse. Do you get what I'm saying now? Now, how do you stay under the law, under the blessing? When you continue. <laughs> Did you see it now? Hello? Did you see it now? So, what brings you under the cause, under the law, is that you continue it not. You continue it not in all that is written in the book of the law. That is what brings you under a cause. So, if you want to continue under the blessing, what do you do? Everybody talk to me now. This is Bible study. You do what? No. It is a do what the law says you should do. You continue. That is what brings you under the cause. Under the cause, you come under the cause. If you continue it not in all that is written. But if you want to continue in the blessing, what do you do? You continue in all that is written. That is what the, that's what separated the law into two. The law is blessing and cursing. That is what the law is all about. That's what the law is all about. Did you get it now? That's what the law is all about. So now, now, the Bible now said, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. But hear this. Look at Malachi 3, 7. That is to show you, I want to show you how you are caused for not tithing. The cause is not the tithe. The cause for the cause is that you continue it not. Peter, did you get that? The problem is not the tithe. The tithe does not have a cause on top of it. But because the tithe was brought under the law and you continue it not in tithing, you bring yourself under a cause. Here, God explained it in Malachi 3, 7 to 10. Are you there? Everybody look at your something. Hear what he said. Even from the days of your fathers, you are what? You are gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. In other words, you have stopped doing it. Return to me and I will return to you, said the Lord of hosts. But he said, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But he said, wherein have we robbed God? In tithes and offering. Ye are caused with a cause. Is it because they are not tithing? Because they refuse to continue with no, with the tithing. <laughs> Did you see now? They are caused with a cause because they refuse to continue in tithing. They say a man was killed with a knife. Is it the knife that has a problem or the person that has anger that killed the man with a knife? Eh? So tight is not the problem. The problem is that if you don't continue in tightening, what happens to you? You bring yourself under a curse. So if you continue in tightening, you keep yourself under what? Under the blessing. So that's what God was explaining to them. He said, even from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances. You have gone, you have stopped it. He said, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. But you said, where shall we return? He said, will a man rob God? Ye have robbed me. But you said, where then have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are caused with a cause, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. So that you can escape the cause. Are you listening to me now? So that you can escape the cause. Now, in Galatians 3.10, the Bible now says, And Christ has redeemed us from the cause. Sorry, that's in Galatians 3.13. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Now, what is the cause of the law that Christ redeemed us from? Not continuing in tithing. Christ has redeemed us from that, from that cause. 
So in the New Testament now, if you don't continue in tithe, are you hearing me now? Under this new priest now, if you don't continue in tithe, then you have escaped what? You have caused. Now, if you continue in tithe, you keep yourself under what? So in the New Testament, you choose where you want to belong. But you see, if you don't continue in tithe, you are not under the curse anymore. But if you don't continue in tithe also, you are not under the blessing. Because what brings you under the blessing is that you are continuing in it. God is not interested in you tithing once in a blue moon. God is interested in blessing you because you are continuing in it. Ah. <sighs> Do you know what I'm saying now? That is, what, that is what we need to get, not to argue whether there's tithe in the New Testament or not in the New Testament. No, 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 no. We understand, we understand that tithe connects us with a high priest. And a high priest connects us to what? To what? To what? Huh? No. Your high priest connects you to what? No, it connects you to the mercy. That's what your high priest connects you to. Your high priest is occupying high priest field office today so that he can obtain mercy for you. So when you stop tithing, then he cannot obtain mercy for you because he needs both gifts and sacrifice to stay in the office. For the sacrifice, he cannot perform sacrifice again. You can only do it once and for all. But for the gift, it's continuation. It's continuing. Did you get it now? So what keeps you, what brings you under the cause, under the Leviticus priesthood, is that you are not continuing in tithing. And God told Israel that they brought themselves under a cause, not because tithe is a cause. Because the law says, if you don't continue in what is written in the law, you are under a curse. And the, and, the, and, the, and the law says, if you continue in doing what the law says, you are under the blessing. Hallelujah. So, listen to me. Second Corinthians 4, 4. Satan, who is the God of this world, have blinded the minds of those who don't believe. Hallelujah. Satan is the God of this world. Now, meaning that God of this world, is, it, is that really true? Is the Satan the God of this world? No. That word, translated word there, is, is a different Greek word from the world where we are living now. The Greek word, translated word here, is ages. It's age. Or system. So what he's saying is that the devil is the god of this system. So, and when you talk about system, you are referring to business, you are referring to activities, you are referring to this, you are referring to politics. Devil is the god of politics. That's what the Bible is saying. He's the god of this system. So that's why if Christians are going to play politics, they must be ready to play it with God's wisdom. Because the devil is interested in it. The same thing with business. The same thing with business. I've said it here severally. The people of this world are not making money because they have BA, is it BA in banking and finance? Let me tell you, there's more to it than you are seeing in the physical. There's more to it than you are seeing in the physical. That's why many believers are trying to contest that they are doing their best, but let me tell you, they frustrate you out. You know, I, I, I've, 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 told you, I've told you people before. Example was when I got some money and I want to do car business. First to begin with, the man who took me to go and buy the car, he cheated me heavily. I said, Tuku, this thing is expensive. He it said, Oga Karkadamu. So by the time I took the cow and reached and reach, uh, Ibaran to sell the cow, 
we landed. They came to price it, I refused because they were pricing below what I bought. Immediately I landed, they knew that I'm, in, I'm a visitor. So the first person priced it 3,000. I said no, he went away. The second person came and priced it 2,005. I said no, he went away. The next one came and priced it 2,000. And then people advised me and said, Oga, sell this cow or else. Even one five, even one, even one thousand, nobody could buy them. So later on, they now told me, they said, I cannot just enter their association, I cannot just enter the market without being a part of the association. Are you still there? Yeah, this thing is flashing. Just light. Did you get what I'm saying now? So the devil is the god of this age. That is why I, I question how can a Christian not make tight a priority and you want to succeed in business? It's going to be extremely difficult. Because let me tell you, the devil wants to get all the money. There's no one single unbeliever who wants Christian to have one kobo. No. There's none. <laughs> There's none. And do you know what? They sacrifice everything they can sacrifice for every cover they can make. And then here you are, you can't even pay tight. If you can't pay tight, how can you sacrifice your mother for money? Hmm? You can't pay tight. How can you sacrifice your mother for money? And they, they have sacrificed their own mother for money. Some sacrifice their wife. Some sacrifice their firstborn. Are you listening to me now? So the Bible says Christ is the high priest. He goes between man and God. Are you listening to me now? And what keeps Christ in the priesthood office is our tithe, which we have already proved. Hallelujah. So, God knows that it is difficult when it comes to money. Now, hear what he said to us in Malachi 3.10. That Malachi that we're reading from, he said, bring you all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, said the Lord of hosts. And prove me now, said the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. He said, prove me. This is the only place you will see where God said, prove me. When it comes to money, God said, prove me. Because God knows you are very attached to your money. But God said, you can prove me with your money. He said, be tight, I will open the windows of heaven. Now, this I will pour you out blessings. He said, I will pour you out a blessing. You don't need blessings to survive, to succeed. You just need a blessing. And you know what? Your tithe connects you to it. Because listen to this. I will open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. You can only get the windows of heaven open and get the blessing because you continue in tithing. I think we have proved it. What brought you under the, under the, under the cause is what? Because you continue it north. It's not the tide. The tide doesn't bring you into cause. It's because you continue it north in it. That's why he said, he said, right from the days of your fathers, you have gone away. He said, return. <laughs> what did he say do what? He said, return. He said, if you return to me, I will return to you. In other words, you can think that God is with you and God is not with you. Because if God said, return unto me, I will return unto you. How can God return if God is still with you? Hallelujah. Now, the step we take further in the New Testament is this. You know, tight came before the law. And the Bible says Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him for what? For righteousness. So Abraham did not operate under the law. But Abraham operated under faith. And that's why the Bible said, Paul said, Paul said, nobody should force us to be circumcised. Because when God said, when the Bible said that, uh, God, uh, the Bible said that, and Abraham 
uh, the Bible said, and, and Abraham was justified. He said, Abraham was not justified by circumcision. Abraham was justified by what? By faith, because he believed God. He only received circumcision as a seal of the justification that he received. Did you get what I'm saying now? So, meaning that now, when God does not want us to tithe under the law, because we are no longer under the priesthood of the Levites, now God wants you to tithe under what? Under faith. You didn't get this. Let me explain it again. Now, listen to this. We are no longer under the law. Did you get it now? Now, the Bible said, Abraham was not justified by works. Abraham did not receive justification because he circumcised himself. Paul said, Abraham was justified by faith before he was circumcised. He only received circumcision as what? As a seal for the justification that he had while he was under faith. He said, the reason why God did that is this. So that Abraham will no longer be, will not just be a father to those who are circumcised, but will also be a father to those who are after the order of the faith of Abraham. Are you listening to me now? So now, meaning that if you are not living under the law, God expects you to be living by what? By faith. Those are the two that exist faith and law. Faith and law. Are you listening to me now? So now, meaning that in the New Testament, we don't tithe under the law, but we tithe by what? We tithe by faith. We tithe by faith. Hallelujah. We tithe by faith. But already we know that the only way we can stay under the blessing is by what? By continuing in tithing. By continuing in tithing. And God wants us to do it by what? By faith. God wants us to do it by faith. Now listen to me. Now meaning that in the New Testament, in the New Testament, you should not limit yourself to 10%. You say, how? Let me explain that to you. Now, listen to this. Jesus said, you have made the word of God of non effect by what? By your tradition. And what is tradition? Something that you do often. Now, meaning that you can make the word of God of non effect by something you do often. And tight is what you do often to stay under the blessing. Now, meaning that Tight can become a tradition. And if you keep tight as a tradition, it will make the word of God of none effect. How? I shall explain it. Good. Now, what it means is this if you keep the tradition of tithing, are you listening to me now? Now, your experience will also be tradition. Are you listening to me now? Your experience will also be tradition. That is, there will not be anything that challenges your faith at any time. Because you are used to doing it. It is very easy for you to collect your one million and remove 100,000 naira and give it as tight. And you plan with the remaining 90. Are you listening to me now? With the remaining 900,000 naira. And you can keep doing that for as many, for as long as you want to. Are you listening to me now? Now, if somebody take 100,000 naira and join to that 100,000 naira you have, how much do you have left? Out of 1 million, how much do you have left? See, your salary is 1 million. Your tithe is how much? 100,000. Now, mean that 
Now you pay the 100,000, it's a tradition with you. Now you have how many left? How much left? Now you plan your 900,000. 100,000 to your wife, 100,000, 200,000 naira to your, to your children, another 100,000 naira for this, another. So, so you plan it, it has become a tradition. Are you listening to me now? Now, if somebody add, take that 100,000 naira and add to this your title, 100,000, and make it 200,000, what do you have left? 800,000. Now, meaning that your tradition has been affected. You will have to make up for that 100,000 naira that you don't have with the usual 900,000. Are you listening to me now? Now, you know what that means? That that means you will have to learn to believe God, to go away from what you used to be. Do you know what I'm talking about now? It has affected your budget, so you will need something extraordinary outside your traditional faith to survive. So meaning that when God wants to do something outside what is traditional in your life, did you hear what I said? When God wants to do something that is outside the traditional in your life, God will affect your budget so that you can look up to him to, make, to meet up. Do you know what I'm talking about? Eh? That, that's the faith. Are you listening to me now? So that's what the Bible says. You can make the word of God of non-effect by your tradition. Did you catch it now? You can make the word of God of non-effect by your tradition now. Now, why many people are having financial challenges today is because things in the market are skyrocket and their salary remains what it is. Are you hearing me now? So now, they need extra faith because their, their, their income can no longer meet up. Are you listening to me now? But listen today, listen to me. But if you have not been living by tradition and you have been living by, it's just, okay, okay, like me now. Like me now. Are you hearing me now? Everybody is complaining things are tough financially. Why they are saying that is because their income can no longer take them home again. Their take home can no longer take them home again. Is that not it? But me that I don't have a take home. So what is my complaint? <laughs> Nothing. Maybe you didn't get it. Let me put it this way. A blind man sat down. And then some children came and said, Baba, please, did you ever see two people that pass here now? The Baba now said, oh, I didn't see them, but maybe I was sleeping the time they passed. One of the children now said, even if you are not sleeping, will you see them? <laughs> did you know what I'm saying now? <laughs> now? A man that has no income and is complaining that there is inflation. Even if there is no inflation, where is the income coming from? Eh? Do you get what I'm talking about now? So that's why people are complaining about inflation. But I cannot complain because I have been living by faith before today. Yes. <laughs> so even if today government says, okay, we make salaries three times. Are you listening to me now? Nobody's going to make my own three times. <laughs> Did you catch it now? Did you catch it now? So that is why if you are not careful tithe that's supposed to be a source of blessing to you can become a tradition and then make the work of the word of God in your life of non-effect. Now, I mean that you can be faithful to tithe for one year, for two years. You will be under the blessing because you will be blessed because you continue in your tithe as the Lord told you. So, you are constantly under the blessing. Are you listening to me now? But listen to me. If you don't shift out of 10% to, to shake your faith and meet up, the day you have a problem with your finances, you will not be able to, you will not be able to catch up. 
And that's why someone like Mizuzo said, if you have to wait until the day you are sick before you learn to walk by faith, then you are walking, you are walk, you are walking too late. Economically, truly, it is tough. But guess what? I cannot complain because I don't have income from anywhere. So my life is still normal, despite that there's supposed to be hard economy. Are you listening to me now? But I cannot complain because even if the economy is not hard, I, I don't spend, I'm not on income, I'm on faith. <laughs> Are you listening to me now? So that's where we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful with tithing. Under the New Testament, we're not supposed to tithe by law. We're supposed to tithe by faith. Are you listening to me now? And then when you tithe by faith, you don't keep yourself on 10%. And that's why people like, people like uh, Colgate, Colgate said he, he kept increasing his tithe. He got to a time he was tithing 80% of his income. Yes. 80% of his income. And the more he increases tithe, the more his income increases. Because you cannot over give to God. Because there's he that will tell them more than his meat. And it turned to poverty. And the seed that spread it abroad, that scattered it abroad, and what happens? And increase it. That is, that is God's economy. That is God's economy. That is God's economy. That is God's economy. Hallelujah. So you can see where I came from this night. I came from the fact, I came from the point of trying to disabuse your mind that tight. It's under the law. Tight is not under the law. Are you listening to me now? In fact, Jesus Christ is in the priesthood office today because you tight. Because the job of a priest is that priests are ordained, which I've already showed you the scriptures. Priests are ordained for men. Priests are ordained, sorry, priests are ordained for men. As pertaining to things that's of God. In other words, priests are supposed to go from men to God. Hallelujah. And they are to offer what? Both gifts. Both gifts and sacrifices for sin. But sacrifices for sin, he has done it once and for all, he will never repeat it again. So what we are left with is what? Is the gift. And the gift is what? Is our tithe. And the work of the priest is to obtain mercy for us so that we can find help to help. So that we can find grace to help in time of need. So if you don't tithe, then it means that Christ is not in the priesthood office for you. If Christ is not in the priesthood office for you, then how do you obtain mercy? How do you obtain mercy? And we have discovered that the problem is not the tithe. It's not the tithe that carry costs. It's the law that carry costs. The law says, if you don't continue in, hallelujah, I see some people, they tithe their salary, but they don't tithe the gift of money they give to them. You see, you continue. You continue. Continuing in it is what keeps you under the blessing. Not continuing in it is what brings you under the cause. But Christ has redeemed us from that one. So if you don't continue in tithing, you are not under the cause. But guess what? You are not under the blessing either. You are not under the blessing either. Hallelujah. But under the law, people tithe by the law. But under the New Testament, we tithe by faith. Because Abraham gave tithe by faith, not by the law. So he was justified, not by the law, but by, but by faith. Are you listening to me now? And the Bible says, tradition can make the word of God of non-effect. Non-effect means 
you apply God's word, you claim God's promises, it doesn't produce any result. What makes it to be, to be non-effective? The tradition. There's a tradition now in your life. Because it's just normal for you to give your tithe and, and place and plan your and plan your life, the rest of your life, with 90%. I you listening to me now. Now, I don't plan my life because I don't have income in the first place. <laughs> so when I talk to you, I will tell you, I will see you in the evening. Or I will see you in the afternoon. I will pay the money to you in the afternoon. I don't tell you I pay the money to you tomorrow because there's nobody who is, who is giving me any money tomorrow. All my money comes by faith. And faith is now. Faith does not work by time. The law of faith and the law of time, they don't operate together. Now faith is the substance. Hallelujah. So I operate with now. I speak with now. I said, listen, they will supply us another one. I don't say anything finished. I said we need more because I live by faith. But if you live by budget, if you live by budget, you will tell the people, see, we cannot drink, we cannot spend more than 100,000 naira for this because we are working by budget. Are you listening to me now? And you work by budget when you Keep yourself on a particular tight. Before you know what is gone, it becomes tight. You can't get out of it. So to get out of it, sometimes push yourself so that you can, you can live by faith. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet. So don't allow the tight that's supposed to be a blessing to become a tradition that makes the word of God of non-effect. Hallelujah. Don't allow it. Because that might just be a challenge. That might be a challenge. Hallelujah. Now lift up your hands and bless God tonight. Lift up your hands and bless God tonight. Lift up your hands and bless God tonight. Just lift up your hands and bless God tonight. You can make the word, the word of God of non-effect by your tradition. You can make the word of God of non-effect by your tradition. Whatever you are used to doing is a tradition. That's what I tell people. Push yourself beyond the 10%. Exercise the faith now. Don't wait until life becomes tight before you now want to learn how to survive. No, it, it won't work. It won't work. Hallelujah. It won't work. Financially, I'm balanced. I'm balanced. Financially, I'm balanced. I don't need to speak what others are speaking because I, I, I don't have a source of income. I live by faith as a preacher. Hallelujah. And your income can become a trap. Your income can become a trap. Your income can become a trap. Father God, we thank you again for tonight. Thank you for the entrance of your word. The Bible says, give light and give understanding unto the simple. Thank you for everything you have done in our lives before today. Lord, we pray that our tithe will not become a trap for us. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Not without tithe, but without faith. Father God, some of us believe we are pleased you because we are tithing. No, you don't, you don't bless us because we tithe. You bless us because we have faith in you. And sometimes our tithe can become our trap. Lord, I pray for your children tonight that they will be encouraged, that they will release their faith so that they can get everything that Christ died for. Thank you, precious Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory and honor and majesty. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You are watching us online. We say we see you in our next meeting. God bless you. Good night. Okay. You have offering tonight? If you have your offering, take your offering. Hallelujah. If you have an offering, 
If you are now often, take an offering. Father God, thank you one more time for this prayer and this opportunity to be a blessing to your work, to your house, and to your servant. Lord, as we drop our offering tonight, I pray that every suffering your people are going through is dropped in Jesus' name. Thank you, precious Father. I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor and majesty. In Jesus' name.